Hey folks, this is Kalani. With the huge launch of classic World of Warcraft, a lot of players probably put Battle for Azeroth on the shelf for at least a little bit. Classic has also been retaining a lot more players than I honestly thought it would. It looks like the popularity is here to stay, and this won't be some one-off fad or craze. Classic definitely has a strong allure, so you might not have been paying any great attention to the retail version of the game, which means you probably missed the entirety of patch 8.2 5 on the public test realm. That patch is now ready to go live, which caught me totally unawares, and from what I can tell, pretty much nobody was looking too closely at this patch or expecting it to come anytime soon, but Blizzard made a little announcement yesterday saying that patch 825 is right around the corner, and we should be able to play it very, very soon. Let's have a quick chat about what content will be making its way into the game with patch 825, what key elements you should pay particular attention to, and perhaps most importantly, will this patch be worth taking a break from Classic WoW to take part in. Let's break it all down. The first thing that really struck me about this announcement is just how little we've heard about this patch on the public test realm. I'm usually super up to speed with that kind of thing, but Classic has definitely been keeping me preoccupied right now. Even still, we really haven't seen many new things go onto the PTR for testing, which kind of worried me. When we have a slow PTR cycle, the patch usually releases later than intended or later than we originally assumed. This patch is coming out of nowhere with with a bunch of stuff that we haven't really been given any time to test. So either the dev team thinks most of this stuff is good to go and doesn't need much testing, or we might be getting one of the buggiest patches we've had in a while. I guess we'll have to wait for the release to see which way that penny drops, but it's actually also really exciting at the same time. We know, for example, that there are two very long cinematics in this patch. They're in the files, we can kind of see them, but we aren't able to actually view them. They're encrypted, and they won't become available until the patch goes live. These aren't just your run-of-the-mill end of a questline cinematics or even end of raid cinematics, one of them is 3 minutes and 18 seconds long. That's a pretty long cinematic by itself, but we have another one. The other one is 6 minutes and 18 seconds. Over 6 minutes of glorious Blizzard cinematic beauty. That is going to be a huge, huge story either unfolding or ending. This is going to be massive for the game going forward, no matter what, which is super cool, and it's all entirely unknown. Kind of like the majority of this patch, I guess. Whether it's because we were so busy with Classic, or just because they want to keep things under wraps, Patch 825 might be one of the least reported on patches we've had in a very long time. I know I haven't made that many videos talking about what's coming and breaking it all down, previewing each new feature as it becomes active on the PTR, we just didn't get that this time around. That means a good chunk of this patch will still be decently unknown as it goes live, which is super exciting for me. Obviously, I stand to benefit from the data mining and whatnot, making videos as everybody does, but having a mysterious patch is really a nice change of pace. Now, we do have some idea of what those cinematics will relate to, because there's one pretty key piece of information that slipped through the cracks of patch 825. This patch, even though it's a 0.5 patch, will unveil the ending of our current war campaign. The battle for Azeroth, as it was originally pitched to us, the Horde and the Alliance at each other's throat again, that will somehow come to an end with this patch. With how things are currently, that means Sarfang and the buddies will make some pretty big steps forward or fail completely. Sylvanas will show us her true plans weren't evil at all, or, you know, we'll kill her. I think that's kind of how this story ends, one of those two possibilities, but I could be wrong, and the dev team could have a massive curveball lined up just for us, but either which way, these cinematics will likely tell the story, which is probably the best thing I could hope for. It's one thing to tell a story in a raid, tell a story through a questline, or in-game in general, and a completely different thing to tell a story through a cinematic. I wish all key moments in the game were told through cinematics, because let Let's be honest, they're pretty amazing. I don't think I've been disappointed with Blizzard cinematics in a very, very long time. They've always been fantastic, even if the story wasn't all that great, the cinematics still brought it to life. So we have a 3 minute cinematic and a 6 minute cinematic, so nearly 10 minutes when you take the seconds into account, which should hopefully put a really awesome cap on the key storyline of Battle for Azeroth so far. But if the war campaign is coming to an end, 
What does that mean for the rest of the expansion? This was the battle for Azeroth. Horde versus Alliance. It didn't really make much sense until Savannah became the target of both factions, and then it kind of became us against her, which is a little easier to follow, I guess, because it happened once before with Garrosh. It just isn't a satisfying story. I'm really curious to see how it comes to an end, to see if they really did have something up their sleeve, or if they lied about the whole Sylvanas not being Garrosh 2.0 thing. But either way, with that story done, where do we go next? The most obvious answer right now is to the Void, right? Nazoth was just awoken, we freed him from his prison, or I guess Azara did if you want to be picky about it, and he swept her away to god knows where. If we're finally done fighting amongst ourselves, which if the war campaign does come to a clean end with this patch, then we should be, our next target should be the old gods in the void. But is that really a patch 8.3 storyline? There's no way this gets resolved anytime soon. The void is supposed to be the big bad of the big bads. The Burning Legion was the big bad for the longest time, but they were just a means to an end. They wanted to eradicate all life so the Void couldn't take root. Sargeras was willing to burn the universe to ash to prevent the spread of the Void, and we just spanked his booty because we thought his plan was crazy. If we manage to save Azeroth, really the only threat that makes sense after that is the Void. But we probably only have one patch left in Battle for Azeroth, patch 8.3. Maybe an 8.3.5 and another smaller patch after that that for a few bits and bobs here, and then pre-patch for the next expansion. That's probably our quota for this expansion, and then we should be moving on. So if we were going to do something for just one patch and then move on, would that really be the Void? I guess they could introduce the Void and have us lead up into a full-on Void expansion, but that means at the very least we won't be going after Azara or Nazoth for patch 8.3. So we're left in this really weird middle ground. The war campaign is over, and most of what's happened in Battle for Azeroth is wrapped up, but at the same time, I doubt they'll really let us go too deep into the next story until another expansion rolls around. They don't want us biting into the good stuff until we pay for another expansion, I guess. I find it interesting that we still haven't heard anything about patch 8.3, though I guess it makes a bit more sense at this point really, doesn't it? If we did know anything about 8.3, then 8.2.5 would be overshadowed quite significantly, and the key story points that are being kept so under wraps at this point would be kind of worthless. So they could just be keeping their lips tight about where we go from here and making sure absolutely nothing about patch 8.3 gets leaked or hinted at, or maybe they've decided to not go for patch 8.3 at all. We could be heading straight into the next expansion, after 825. It's kind of the perfect stopping point for that story, and we can move on really cleanly. This is also the last patch before BlizzCon, and we know that we'll see something about the next expansion this year at BlizzCon. It's kind of unavoidable in a lot of players' opinions. This is the year where we see where WoW goes next. We'll either learn about patch 8.3 and the next expansion, or just the next expansion. We'll be heading to the Shadowlands, maybe chasing Nazoth into the Void, some other random place Blizzard makes up to fill in the gap between now and taking on the last enemy of Azeroth. No matter where the next expansion takes us, we should get a very good look at it in November. It's an important year for every Blizzard game, and I'm sure we'll see a lot of information about all of them, but with World of Warcraft being no exception. So I guess the big question is, is this it for Battle for Azeroth? Would you be happy if they sort of cut ties and moved on at this point, or do you think it's still a little too early? Does BFA still have a little more to give? This entire expansion has revolved around the war Sylvanas started with the Alliance. As soon as that war ends, do we really need to stay in BFA? Anything past this point is kind of encroaching on the next major storyline. So why not just say let's be done with BFA and move on to the Shadowlands, or the Voidlands, or whatever lands come next? They could go through all of the info they usually do about the new expansion and drop a release date right there on stage at BlizzCon this year. If it's soon enough, that could be a major power play. A lot of people are kind of tired of Battle for Azeroth. Giving Retail WoW a nice new coat of fresh paint with a new expansion could be a major turning point, especially with so many players reinvested in Azeroth with the release of Classic WoW. 
They've done it before. They cut an expansion before its typical lifespan. Warlords of Draenor was dropped harder than any other expansion, and we moved into Legion as quickly as the dev team could push us through the door. BFA hasn't quite been the disaster that Warlords was, but it's definitely not been the comfiest ride either. I don't know if they would want to cut things so short when they've said they want to aim for two-year expansions, but if they think getting out of BFA and into the next story makes the most sense for the game, then I don't doubt they would take that path. So right now, patch 825 looks like it could be the end for Battle for Azeroth. But what's actually in this patch? We haven't heard too much about it during the classic launch. The PTR has practically been dead for the last month or so. Well, they fired up the good old PTR updater recently, quite a few times actually, so we have a better idea of what content you can expect. It also helps that Blizzard put together a list of content for A25, as well as patch notes, and we have a release candidate build on the PTR, which means the release is sure to be within the next few weeks. Oh, and um, a release date. Yeah, this has been rapid fire information and it's actually kind of weird. We went from a dead PTR to a release date for the patch in two days. I don't think that's ever happened before, and because I know you're just dying to know, the release date isn't that far off either. A lot of people were speculating we were a few weeks away. Maybe a little bit more, then the release candidate showed up and it dropped down to two or three weeks at the max. October 1st was the most likely release date that I saw floating around, and I kind of agreed with that. But nope, patch 8.2.5 will go live this very next reset. September 24th or 25th, depending on where you live and what server you play on. But if that doesn't tell you they're gearing up for something, I don't know what will. That also makes the secret cinematics all that more interesting. Before today, I doubt anyone would have pegged this patch to release in September, even if it's a small patch or mainly a story patch, even if there isn't going to be that much content to sink your teeth into, seeing a patch go from nothing on the PTR to going live this week is not something we've seen before, especially not recently. So, what can you find in patch 8.2.5? Well, obviously the conclusion for the war campaign, that's the big seller here, and the cinematics to go along with it should provide you with a good 10 minutes of fun, even if the war campaign quests only take 5 minutes themselves. We will also see the party sync feature, which will allow you to play with almost anyone at any level at any time, and complete level appropriate objectives with them, and even repeat quests and whatnot so you can actually play together instead of just tagging along. If you have friends that are interested in playing retail but you don't want to start a new character with them, this could be the perfect system for you. There's the new updated Worgen and Goblin models to look out for, the new bee mount which looks like it's going to take quite a bit of questing to earn, that is confirmed to be for alliance only, so if you want to get that one you should spend the next few days making sure you have an alliance character that can progress the quests. The Firelands Time Walking Raid will join the ever-expanding roster of Time Walking content that will be available when Cataclysm Time Walking comes around again, and the Recruit of Friends system will also be returning, offering up a whole bunch of rewards for those those of you who can recruit some friends into the game. There's also an interesting change to the mercenary feature. If you haven't used this before, or you just didn't know about it, you can bat for the other team in Battlegrounds if the queues are too long. So you can play as an alliance player in Battlegrounds even if you're actually a hoardy. You just need to go to the right NPC, tell them you're a traitor, and boom, faster queues. This used to have a 50% honor bonus tied to it, which they will be removing in patch 8.2.5. I guess getting your honor essences was a little too easy if you used mercenary mode all the time, so they're nerfing it. And we will also see a whole bunch of extra items show up on the Black Market Auction House. It's been a while since that list was updated, so I guess it's about time, but some of these items are going to drive a few people crazy. I'll give you a link to a Wowhead page that lists everything that we know so far, but included in these items are the Tusks of Manoroth. That item is highly sought after for Transmog because it's incredibly rare, and it's the shoulders that Garrosh started wearing after becoming Warchief. They're pretty badass, and apparently they can be yours in 8 five, providing you have enough gold. The first Satyr Spaulders will be joining the Tusks on the Black Market Auction House 2, another set of really cool shoulders that will probably reach gold cap as soon as they appear on the Auction House. They're also incredibly rare, those ones come from Xavius, from what I remember. There's a whole bunch of rare drop mounts as well as some seasonal illusions in the mix as well. Check it out if the Black Market Auction House is your kind of thing. 
I'm pretty excited that 825 will give me something to look forward to on retail again. While I'm having a blast with Classic, I do want to pop onto BFA once in a while as well. I want to play both versions of the game, but BFA just doesn't have that much for me right now. But with a new patch comes new opportunities, I'll definitely be finishing up that war campaign to see those cinematics firsthand and dabble in everything else that 825 is offering up. It's not that much, but at least it's something. I still think it's a brilliant idea to keep Classic and BFA kind of trading back and forth. Releasing major updates for either game at the same time would be a big mistake in my opinion, so it makes a lot of sense that they waited this long after Classic to get this patch up for BFA. And honestly, I think Classic gave them the space they needed to work on this patch without anyone breathing down their neck. With so many people enjoying Classic, maybe the dev team didn't feel quite as rushed to get the next patch out. We're not tapping our feet, waiting on the sidelines in the middle of a content drought anymore. Even though BFA is pretty dry right now, we have some stuff to do, even if it's kind of old stuff because it's vanilla all over again, but it beats logging in and standing around for 50 minutes before logging off again. The duet between these two versions of Warcraft could be the real key to the future of this game. But I've babbled on long enough I guess, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video and about patch 825. Remember, it goes live this very next reset, so if you are planning on getting any ducks in a row before 825 hits, you only have a few days left to do so. What do you think about the future of BFA? Will we see patch 8.3, or do you think Blizzard will shove us straight into the next expansion and hope it fares a little better than Battle for Azeroth? If you think 8.3 is still going to happen, what do you think it will entail? Do you think we'll be setting up for the next expansion, or just tying up some random loose ends somewhere else in the world? Leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. A big thank you to all of our supporters over on Patreon, you can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, you can find a link in the description below. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, if you want to see more make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching folks, good luck and have fun, and as always I will see you next time.